add. Okay, so now that we are recording some of our professional development norms as you come in today, just remember to be committed, responsible, and respectful, um, and safe, ask questions if you need it, all of those things. Uh, you're welcome to turn your camera on if you'd like or off, mute your microphone unless you have a question, we'll ask for some of those in a little bit. Um, and then if you have a question specifically, you can write in the chat and we'll make sure we get those answered and I'll make sure Camille gets those. Um, as everything we do in Canyon School District is connected to the MTSS framework, remember that a lot of these things that we do in Canvas meet many of these different pillars, which is really exciting and fun. So I'm gonna turn the time over to Camille for today's activity. Thanks, Justin. So I wanted to start with our learning intentions and success criteria for this training. So today you're learning about this new feature. It's the Canvas for Elementary theme. And this is different than, I know there was something released either last year or the year before, honestly, the past few years have kind of blurred together, where you could go into your Canvas course and just enable a certain font. It was like the, cal the elementary font. This is different than that. So today you're learning about this new theme, um, how it's different than the current Canvas theme that we're used to using in Canvas Canyon School District. And then you're gonna have the option to decide whether or not you want to use it. And that's why opt-in is part of this uh, title. And success criteria is you'll know you're successful when you can identify the differences between the current Canvas theme and this elementary theme. And as we go through this, I get a little excited because the more I've played with this elementary theme, um, it was definitely something that talking to my team, I was like, there's no way we can push this out to everybody. Um, it's different enough. I keep using the analogy of moving the cheese. It moves the cheese enough in Canvas. It doesn't change a lot of the processes. You don't lose anything that you've already been working on and creating. It just moves the cheese a little bit. And so that move is where if you decide you want to use it, um, I'll talk more about that opt-in option and what would be required and how it would work. Um, but I want you to pay attention as we're going through this today, what is different and what you think. And there will be time, I'll even ask Justin if there's questions throughout, so definitely use that chat. And I'd love to get even just your initial feedback, things you're thinking like, wow, that actually does look great, or ooh, I'm a little hesitant about that feature. That's the information I want because I want to get your, your feedback. So here's our agenda. Um, I won't be in this, this presentation long. I'm actually gonna go out to the web browser where I actually get right into Canvas, but I'll do a demonstration. I'll start with the student view. So what the student view looks like, and then I'll talk about the teacher view. Then I'll talk about the opt-in information. So if you're thinking like, wow, I, I do wanna do that. Give me more information. I'll have that there. And then we'll, at, we'll end with any feedback and questions that you may have. So I'm actually gonna go out to the web. And so what you're seeing on the screen right now, this is a student view. I'm Susie Campus. I'm logged into my Canvas course. So what you're gonna see is, I'm hoping you see a difference. Uh, this blue bar, it's called the global navigation. It, there's already a difference. So instead of saying dashboard, it actually has the picture of a house and it says homeroom. So it's now becoming a homeroom experience for our elementary kids. And instead of saying courses, it says subjects. And then calendar is still the same, um, inbox is the same. So the rest of it looks pretty normal, but it's those two major things, homeroom versus subjects. And when I go over to the dashboard part of it, you'll see I have a navigation bar at the top. I have homeroom, schedule, grades, and resources. And I'll talk about those in just a moment, but I wanna scroll down a little bit more. So. With Susie, something that I think I'm hoping you see, there is a first grade homeroom, but it doesn't look like the normal course card that we're used to seeing. Um, it's actually just an announcement that I made and it's a PowerPoint presentation or actually a Google Slides presentation that I embedded that actually will contain all of the information that would normally be on the homepage of whatever course I'm using. But what I like about this is Susie and her parents, when they come right into Canvas, I could have whatever information I want readily available to them or, or to always have access to right here. And I could even update one of these slides as the teacher to say, hey, this week, here's what we're learning. Um, I can either do it by week, by month, but it's just a way to just in your face for my families and even for my student of here's some information. And then with my subjects, 
right off the bat, and I designed this more for a first grade, second grader, maybe even kindergarten, where it's visual. So I have ABC to represent English, but it says ELA first grade. You can see my math course, you can see my science course. So it's now saying subjects. So as Susie, if we wanna go into um, first grade, I mean, sorry, ELA, if I click on the ELA card, now everything in this specific course is gonna be related to ELA. I know something that we experienced last year, and I know we can blame it on COVID, but the more we're using Canvas, I think we're gonna see this issue come up more and more. When you have a Canvas course and you're putting everything in that Canvas course, all ELA, all math, all social studies or science content, that course can get really, really long and big, and it can be hard to really determine where do I find my Savas homework for um, math or where do I find my reading street materials? Um, so that's where the subjects can be really helpful for the student. So I'm an ELA and everything on this ELA page will be related to ELA. So something that I did is I actually have an announcement at the top that's stagnant. I can update this every week. I can update it every month, but it's right for how I'm doing it. It's saying week two, here's my learning intention success criteria related just to ELA. And then if I scroll down, depending on how I've set up my Canvas course or what I want to use it for, I can have some specific information about um, ELA. And this information would probably be more for the parents who come and visit the page, especially if it's kindergarten, first grade. I'm not going to expect them to read this um, information. But if we're working in class and I said, okay, kids, let's go to our skill-based instruction for our ELA time, they can go into their ELA subject, click right into this page. And this is something I showed at district day, if you were, if you remember, um, and they can quickly go to their skill-based instruction time. But if you notice, I'm actually gonna click on that link one more time. Um, when I talk about it moves the cheese, notice how that navigation, we're used to the navigation always being on the side. That navigation's not there. So to go back to that page, that main page for that subject, oops, I have to click on back to subject. And then my navigation appears right on the top. So the navigation, it still fits. And as a teacher, I still have the ability to adjust the navigation, but I'm seeing grades. Modules are, can still be used how we've been using them to help organize content. The schedule in here would be related to everything specific to ELA in this subject. And this ties to anything with due dates. So if I have assignments and I have two due dates tied to them, I can see them on um, this count or the schedule. And then the resources, um, it can be resources that I manually type in and make available. So if there's any specific websites or links I want to provide for ELA or any applications or we call them LTIs or external apps in Canvas, like Clever, um, Connect Ed for my um, three, four, five folk who've been using that science program, Google Drive and Zoom. This can be a link for them. So rather than have, um, it appearing on the side navigation, it's just a link that will open up a new tab to those programs. So I'm going to go back to the homeroom. So I want to go back to my main screen. And that the same thing can happen for math and social studies. So I, as a student, I can go in and then just access math only content, my science social studies content. Um, one thing on this screen I want to point out as well is on the right hand side, there's important dates. This is something that's set up by my teacher. And my teacher in this case used the Canvas calendar. And you'll see like I have back, back to school night, um, wax museum, and the dates are right there. And if I click on them, it'll give me more information on the calendar about where I can go and the time frame. These important dates, and I learned this today because I'm still learning more about this Canvas for Elementary feature, it's set by the teacher. And so it can include things on the Canvas calendar, or it can even include important dates for assignments. So if there's like a an assignment that you know every kid may forget or you want to make sure parents even know hey this assignment is due on this date when you're creating the assignment and you create the assignments just like normal um, you can identify it as an important date and it'll appear on the sidebar for the students and i can see this being more supportive for parents especially in our elementary schools um, and maybe for our three four five students um, but i really liked when i learned more about that feature uh, with the schedule this actually shows the schedule because I'm in the homeroom. It does it for all classes. So my, or my subjects, my ELA, math and social studies. Same with grades. So parents and students could get an overall of the grade um, and actually click into a subject if they want more details. And I have learned that if, as an elementary teacher, if you're not using that Canvas gradebook, I've learned there's a way to hide it. And we can talk about that um, 
if you choose to opt in and we can dive deeper into it. And the resources like what we saw on the subject is more universal that could apply to all, um, all subjects, like even like here's some inf important information for technical support or who to ask for questions if you're working on homework and you need help. So before I go to the, the student, the teacher view, because I know I just talked through a lot of things and clicked on a lot of buttons and shown you some things. Are there any questions out there in Zoom land? So we don't have any questions right now, okay. but just giving them some think time. I really like this for the elementary side of things because it does allow you to have a much simpler view of how they're approaching campus, right? So students don't necessarily have all of these things on the side, all of these buttons, and we're starting to use some of the verbiage that we kind of use in our classes, right? Our homeroom, this is our, this is our class, but then I teach these three subjects. Um, as opposed to, you know, oh, I have all of these different classes, but I only have one teacher. What is that all about? So I really like that. A uh, question we did get is when uh, a teacher opts into this view, do they have to do this with an empty course? How does that work uh, transitioning what they have now, I think, into this is their question. Good, good question. And actually, that's a good transition to showing you the teacher view. Are we any other questions before I move to the teacher view? That's it at okay. this time. Let me go to the teacher view and I'm wondering if this will answer your question or at least help. Um, so what I'm doing because I don't actually have students, I am using um, some fake courses that I've created. But what you do is I know with our elementary teachers, um, when Cam or Skyward creates these Canvas courses for you, it's based off heavily what's in Skyward. So you have homeroom, uh, math, science, and sometimes well, science, English, math, and sometimes science is what I'm trying to say. What I have to do is in my homeroom course, so this is my homeroom course, let's say it was created by Skyward for me, notice how it looks different. I don't have that all that navigation. It's because in my course, I had to um, actually enable it as a homeroom course. But I think to answer your question, technically, um, to try this out, you could do it in an empty course, but what we're looking for as a, for teachers to opt in, we'd want you to try this with courses that actually have your students in there, because I'd love to get feedback of what it's really like for you as the teacher. Is it really more helpful than what we were using, like how it's currently set up now? Um, and what's the parent feedback we're getting as well? Because that was another big reason why as we, I keep looking more and more at this um, elementary view. I feel like it's, fulfills a lot of the um, needs that parents were requesting or that some of the confusion that they had, it really helps with some of that confusion to make it not so confusing. Does that answer that question? I think yeah. I may have talked a little bit around it. I, I think so. And I think in relation to kind of Jennifer's question, I'm, I'm, I think there's also that fear of like, well, I've been working in my Canvas course and then I click that button and does everything disappear? And so we would help you as you are choosing to do this and move forward with this, we would help you, you know, either transfer content to the right course you need or set a certain course as a homeroom so that you still have access to those things. So nothing in this kind of opt-in, you would lose anything. It'll change kind of where your cheese is, like Camille was saying, but we can help make sure uh, you get set up in a way. And then if, you know, you use this again, you would just set your beginning of the year normal as, as you kind of do it because you, you know how to do the homerooms and, and all of those types of things. And I know for some of my instructional coaches out there, and I think Jennifer is an instructional coach, um, if you're looking at this going, I would like to actually try this out, but I don't have students, and that may be why this question gets asked as well, um, there is a way for you to try this out without students. Um, but if you have students, I'd like you to do it with students just so we could have that real experience. Um, but if you're like, well, I'd like to do it, but I don't have any students to work with, don't let that hinder you from opting in. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my teacher view. Um, so I'm logged in as myself um, and you'll see on my screen, I actually have my first grade homeroom class I just clicked into because it doesn't look like my normal homeroom class anymore. And then I have my subjects. So it did change my dashboard as well, but I still have access to all of my courses. So even courses that I'm added to that aren't tied to this Canvas for Elementary theme, I still have access to. I still have full editing or still full um, participant access. And was a little bit like my student view, instead of saying Canvas dashboard, it has my homeroom and then it has my subjects. 
But when I go to, and don't laugh, you guys, I have, you think you have a lot of courses? When I click on all subjects for me, I have like a million. I should clean them up, but um, don't let my clean dashboard confuse. That's why it's taking forever to get there. But I could still have full access. I can still, see, I could probably scroll for a, a really, really long time. But on my dashboard, I still have full capabilities to decide um, which courses I want to I want to see. I can still organize the way I have. I can still see my published versus unpublished. It's just when I say it moves the cheese, it's using that same terminology, that same setup for my for my students. So it's saying my subjects, um, my dash or my navigations on the top as well. So homeroom, I can see a schedule that incorporates all of my courses that have due dates. I can look at grades, even like courses that I'm in, I could look at the grade book for myself, um, resources and this to-do list. This was one thing I know teachers, when, they, when you're setting due dates, you want that to-do list to know when assignments are submitted. That's the to-do list where you can go through and grade your assignments. And you'll see the important dates that I've been specifying as a teacher. Yes, they show up for my students, but they're showing up for me as well. So, um, because I know that ELA and my math, these are two courses that are definitely tied to my homeroom course because the students are matching up. So that's why I know it's going to match the Canvas for Elementary theme. So as the teacher, notice my look is still very similar to the students, um, but I'm missing that side navigation. And this threw me off at first because it moved my cheese. And I was like, ah, how do I get back to edit my pages? Manage subject is what you use to get back to the screen where you can see, um, and this looks like we, what we've been used to before with Canvas, where I can now go to my pages, find it, whatever page I wanted, I'm wanting to edit, and I can click on view pages and see all the pages in my course. I can work from my module section. So if you're one who like creates your modules and you add your content from here, create your assignments, you can do that as well. Um, so the processes, once again, are still the same as a teacher. It's just how I get there is a little different in certain situations. And that's why I say, oh, it's probably annoying by now. I keep saying it moved my cheese. Um, the announcements is what I use. So when you're, um, let me go back to the subject. This little gray box right here, it's just an announcement that I post and it appears at the top of my screen. And like I said, I can decide what I really want to have on this homepage. And then in my module section, um, I can even create right from here as well. So one thing I've learned as well as the, as the teacher view, let me go back to my homeroom. There is a way on the teacher side to change it back to the regular classic view. Um, it's these three little dot, dots and you can actually make it go look like what you're used to. So you'll, it's thinking. Students don't have that option though. So if we decide, if you wanna opt in and try this with your kids, you're able to go back to your classic view. So notice now it's saying dashboard, here's my courses. It looks more like what I'm used to. Um, students don't have that option to do it. It's just for you. So I've actually forced myself to continue doing everything in this homeroom view so I can keep getting used to it and I can keep um, trying out these new features. And I, think I, it's, I think it's important there what you just said is that it doesn't change how you've practiced and trained and learned how to do canvas and all of those things. It's just putting some of those elements in a different place uh, for elementary so that it's easier and it kind of honors what you do with your class and how you teach all of these subjects. And so I like that, that you still have your pages, you still have your modules, you still have access to things. It just looks a little different to start with. Um, and then it helps students by really kind of focusing them in one place. Right. Thank you, Justin. Um, I do want to go back into this homeroom course um, just to show a little bit more about like I said, it changed my navigation where when I enable a course as a homeroom course, all I have access to do is create an announcement, update important information. Um, I can look at who's tied to this course. So right now it's just Susie Campus, but your list of students would appear here. You have files, but I, in the settings is where I can always go back and not enable this as a homeroom course. But this announcement is where you'll see I've been updating this, but it's where I actually let me see if I can actually go into it and edit. So I actually just created a Google slide, but it doesn't have to be a Google slide presentation. And that's one thing when we 
if you decide to opt in and try this out, we can talk more about what will really go there. But I just love the idea of being able to say, because if you think about the requirements we have for your Canvas homepage, you have to have like a welcome message. Um, we've been recommending having a picture even of you just to help parents and students get to know your face. Um, you know, contact information, uh, a schedule. Um, let's see, uh, did I say teacher contact information? Probably. But um, I could have this on the slideshow knowing that it could even be the slideshow that I use at back to school nights. And I know that back to school night already happened, but it could be something where you guys have seen this, you know what's in here. And when they see it on the Canvas course, when they log in, um, they're familiar with it and they go, oh yeah, that's where I can find um, the teacher's information. Or this is gonna let me know what they're, what they're learning this week. Um, and, and like I said, mine's a little bit short, but you can kind of see how I can take those elements that we have on the Canvas homepage and put it right here. So when they go into the subjects, we're going right into um, exactly what I want them to access and click on for whatever activity or um, whatever the learning intention success criteria might be. I'm gonna pause for a second, just let you guys think. Um, are there any initial thoughts, feedback? You can definitely use the chat. Um, any thoughts you guys have before I start talking about our thoughts for how we want this opt-in process to be? And while you're thinking, I'll just jump in because I have control of the buttons um, and just really kind of emphasize what Camille's saying here about what this does. You know, it, it really helps you streamline what's going on and centralize that. So instead of having you know, three different pages with you have the same home page and, and you copy it over, you just need to have that one home page, right? Because that's that announcement area where then your other courses are just there and then it can be strictly content. They go in, find that information and move forward. And it really is, it doesn't lose any functionality that Canvas has. So you're not like, oh, well, I've trained my kids already to do this and now they have to do this. It's there and it works the same. It just looks a little different, which I think is cool and exciting. Yep, thanks, Justin. Okay, so on the slideshow, um, the screen you're seeing right now, I just took a screenshot of the student view with some of the bullets of what I pointed out. So I wanted that to be there for if you want to look back at it. Same with the subject view. So if you dive into like ELA or math, what you can actually see. And then I have screenshots of the teacher view with some of those bullets that we talked about. And then um, that homeroom course. So with the opt-in information, if you're looking at this and you don't have to commit until I'm giving us till September 10th to decide if you want, if this is something you want to opt into. Um, there's two opportunities. Cause I even recognize you're like, dude, Camille, the school year just started. This sounds great, but I just don't have even the mental capacity to try something new right now. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna provide two options, a fall option and a spring option. So the requirements are, we'd want you to commit to using this theme for the rest of the school year. Um, and then attend six required 30 minute synchronous sessions. And they would more than likely be um, virtual like this. You wouldn't have to actually drive to the district location, but those 30 minute syn synchronous sessions are a way to, for us to connect and you guys can provide direct feedback, but it's a way to kind of control the rollout because it's not something I want you to say, I wanna do it and I turn on for you. There's some things we want to prep and have ready before like you're so when we turn this feature on for you it's just a quick change and you're ready to roll with your with your parents and your students we also want to help provide the um, communication to parents and students that when you do this you can send like an email or a note home to parents or even post it in canvas and say hey we're updating our theme here's what's happening because i would love to get parent feedback about this as well um because i think their information can be definitely helpful um and like I said, I'm I'm predicting because of feedback we received last year, what I'm seeing and what I'm experiencing with this new theme, they may actually like, but maybe we're missing something. So feedback would be great. Um, if you do commit, like I said, it's just six required 30 minute sessions with some Canvas work time that you're gonna be doing on your own time, which I think you're already doing. Um, as a result, you'll be eligible for one USBE credit and we will let you know what exactly you have to give to us to provide, to. You basically have to submit some type of artifact, which will essentially be the Canvas course you're creating and building, but we will work to get you that one USBE credit. And if you're working towards an EdTech endorsement, this could actually count towards that EdTech endorsement, or just if you want the USBE credit in general, you could have that. So if interested, um, and I have the form linked on the last slide, this 
is also linked. This picture on our slide is linked to the Google form. Um, you want to complete the form by the, the two dates. If you want to be part of the fall opt-in op option, September 10th is that due date, and then December 10th is for the spring. Will you mute me for a second? Because I'm going to cough. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, why, <laughs> while she coughs, um, I think it's really cool what we're trying to do here. And I think for me as someone who was always that early adopter in the classroom, they'd say, do you want to try this thing? And I'd say, yeah. And they'd say, okay, it's on, good luck. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> And there was no one I could ask for support because people I'd ask in my building, they'd be like, well, I don't know what that is. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm trying this new thing out. So that, that's kind of the purpose of these meetings is to help guide and support you so that you don't, you aren't just running, you know, rough shot into the wild. You have support, you have someone to ask questions and you have a community of people who are all doing it that you can kind of work out those kinks together and work out them with us so that we can help find those solutions as well. And I was looking for the green button. I didn't see my mic. He was muting me. <laughs> so thank you. Um, and also we recognize too, there's some of you out there who are early adopters. Um, I was one of those people. I know Justin's one of those people. We learn about technology and we're like, we want to try that out. I'm ready for it. So you also, knowing this feature is available, um, I wanted to give that option to teachers who are like, I want to try something new. Um, so here it is. So thank you for attending this Bite Size PD. I know it's 30 minutes. It goes really fast. Um, on this slide, and Justin will link these links into the chat of our Zoom, but the first link goes to Canyons U. <clears throat> we have a link to our Canyons U Bite Size PD page where this vi video will be posted as well as other videos. So remember, you don't have to attend live. You can always watch later and fill out the form, which is also linked for credit. And then that opt-in form is linked here as well. And I'm gonna turn the time over to Justin before I cough into the microphone well, again. <laughs> we have a question. Um, so the question is, how would this look if we are teaching the tool teacher, doing the two teacher model for dual language? So how would this work out? Um, and Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are teaching from one Canvas course, um, is my understanding, right? Um, so in that sense, I think both of you would have to kind of be in on this if you're going to do it because you are teaching from that same course. Yes, especially what I was going to say. Um, it's something that one, and I apologize, it's that tickle cough that I hate, but um, it is what, if you're wanting to do this, you definitely want to talk to your um, partner and make sure that they're okay with it as well, because it will affect that course. So she does say that each subject teacher teaches from their own course. Okay. So if you're doing it from your own course, that is definitely a possibility. Uh, it's probably still something you would want to talk with your partner teacher, because those students are going to be kind of trained in a certain way. And you don't want to be that big outlier, I guess, is my yeah. point. And this might be something we can work with you and maybe talk with your coaches yeah. as well and kind of come up with a good solution. Is These are those the reason we have these um, the sessions, right? So that we're learning this mm -hmm. as well and doing these pieces. And so, Teresa, I would say don't let this hint. If you're like, I really want to do this, but um, I'm not sure the other people I work with are going to want to do it as well. Um, don't let that hinder you because we, we can figure something out. Let's think through it. Um, it would be interesting as well to see what happens if it you do it but then um what, what would the feedback be would parents say i really like miss open's uh canvas course why did he, does yours out look like that we don't want to set them up that way but um we could definitely troubleshoot and think through that um so yeah fill out the form if you're interested and we can talk more about that Um, so Noelle's just kind of adding some context saying that they just cross list the kids in each of their courses um, and <laughs> calm down. Noelle says that they're going to need a lot of help because she is their coach, but uh, that amazing. is not true. That's not so true. Uh, nice try, nice try to get out of that, but <laughs> I think you do a great job anyway. So um, it's something definitely I think we can talk about and see what would work best, especially in making sure that both teachers kind of have a good understanding. Yeah, we love Noelle. Uh, she's amazing. So she is. But yeah, I, I don't want this. I don't want you to be hindered from trying it out. If you're like, I do want to try. I mean, we, we're still in the beginning phases of this as well. Um, we can try to figure I don't know. Well, we're figuring this out as we go. But um, 
that's the fun part. The is fun you're part. It, this is the beginning and yeah. while we're trying to figure it out. And instead of doing something to you, we want to work with you to find out the best way to do something before something, you know, happens down the road or whatnot. Yeah. So I think that's one of the really important things for me and Camille as, you know, former <laughs> teachers, we're used to things being done to us. And this is one of those things where like, let's partner with teachers, find out what they need and what they want, and let's see what we can do to help support them in maybe a tool that can make their lives a lot easier, which would be really exciting and fun. So thank you everyone for attending with us today. I will get the links up in the chat here in just a second, uh, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you have questions, please reach out and we will post this video and the presentation slides on the Canyon Zoo page here in just a bit. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.